Time now for the Startup Central feature and today we're putting the spotlight on Inmobi. The reason we're doing so is because of an acquisition that has been announced by Inmobi when it comes to the video platform. Joining me here on Startup Central is Inmobi's co-founder and CEO Naveen. Hi Naveen, thanks so much for joining us here on Startup Central. Uh, before we start talking about Inmobi at large, you want to take us through the big announcement, uh, the acquisition that has been announced by you and why this particular acquisition? Absolutely, and first of all, thank you for talking to me. Look, what, what, what we have done as part of Inmobi Group, we have a company called Glance, which is you know growing phenomenally. It's a B2C platform uh, in India. Um, and the platform is scaling phenomenally over the last you know 12 to 18 months. We have almost touched from a usage point of view about 16 million daily active users, which put Glance as one of the largest consumer properties in India, full stop. And as that happens, what we are realizing is we, we wanted to essentially you know, get more and more content, uh, especially in vernacular language and in video, onto that platform. And so therefore, we you know, talked to the Reposo team and we have acquired Reposo uh, as you know, within Glance, and we feel that uh, with this acquisition, we will be able to add a huge amount of video capabilities, and in, especially in vernacular language, on Glance. And therefore, you know, we are excited by this so-called our first acquisition in India. By the way, we have done multiple acquisitions to date, and most of them, all of them, by the way, have been outside of India. So we're pretty excited about doing this. For doing our first acquisition from India, um, and uh, especially to do that for Reposo. Okay, so that's your first acquisition in India. And if I was to read about Reposo, it's backed by Tiger. It couldn't get uh, you know uh, investors and a new funding round and all of that. It started off basically as a social media, social network for fashion, for fashion content. Then it uh, diversified. What exactly will Reposo under Glance and InMovie be up to? And will you rebrand it as well? Well, we're keeping the brand for now. Uh, we, one of the things Reposo is phenomenal at, by the way, and they've been growing phenomenally. Uh, so they have close to, I think, about 40 to 45 million users as part of their, you know, as part of Reposo. Uh, they create, uh, they have a access to a community of influencers, professional influencers, by the way, who create high quality video content on their platform. And and they were then and that's that's a skill, that's a capability that only Reposo has and and in and Glance actually wanted that. Glance wanted access to some of the highest quality people across India who can create great content for us. Uh, you know, and that's what Reposo did. It's a platform that creates great quality you know uh, content and in vernacular languages. They provide this this kind of a you know high quality video, uh, especially short form video, uh, in about ten languages, and there is no other platform that does so. So we're very excited about this uh, acquisition. We feel it really improves the chances of uh, you know of any user who is a user of Glance going forward to to kind of have access to some very high quality content. And so therefore, we you know we particularly feel pretty excited about this acquisition. So, you know, uh, when I was reading up, you basically have content at the moment in Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, as well as English. Have I got that right? That's correct. And are you looking, because you're saying uh, the focus is primarily going to be in vernacular languages, I would imagine you're going to uh, uh, increase this basket. Can you tell us what would be your immediate focus? That you, you're bang on, by the way. You know, if you think about India, India in India, only 10% of the people understand English. 90% uh, does not. And if you want to build a platform that is available across India, that can be used, used across India, then you have to have a very high uh, you know, focus on vernacular languages. And therefore, one of the things that we're doing is to essentially continuously launch more and more languages. So, you know, we're going to launch Malayalam, we're going to yeah, launch Bengali uh, in the next you know, few months. And Reposo coming on board actually helps us do that much faster. So, you know, let me um, ask you a question, I, and I love asking content creators this, and obviously because I'm also in the business of content creation, just very different from what you folks do. Uh, you know, there's this whole notion uh, that people's attention span is uh, not very large. If you don't grip, get them gripped in the first five seconds, forget about it. 
is that true? And, and how do you make sure that your consumers stay with you? Uh, what are some of the battles that you're seeing on this front? And is it true they actually have an attention problem that are interested in long format? That is, that, that is true, by the way. I think what people are looking for is an extremely high return on investment of their time that they spend looking at any, any content. So what people are essentially, you know, you know, forcing content creators to do, or consumers are forcing content creators to do, is to say, hey, I'm going to give you 20 seconds, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, I'm going to give you a minute, tell you all that you got. Now, previously, when there was not so much fight for, you know, variety of content that existed, you know, the content creator essentially created that same content over 10 minutes to 30 minutes to 60 minutes, and people watched it. Today, you have to be very tight on the message that you want to give, and you've got to give that in less than a minute. And that's what, uh, you know, focus for glances, and that has been the focus for uh, uh, for Reposo. And therefore, they, you know, us working with them, partnering with them in the way we are is, is, is you know, is very applicable. So what do you guys at um, InMobi do? Do you create uh, a video and then just, uh, uh, you know, have it in different languages? Or is it also specifically uh, for for that dialect because uh, maybe the preferences are different? Is it different, like what people in what like in Tamil and what they would like in Telugu? What has your experience been? Yeah, look, absolutely. You know, as, within Glance, what we do is, A, we, we, we work with content creators who create content. So we're not necessarily ourselves a content creator. We are a technology company. Uh, but we, we, we get content created in different languages, you know, of that region. Uh, we don't necessarily try to, uh, we, do, we do not essentially convert in a, a, you know, a show in, a, you know, let's say in Hindi into Tamil by essentially, you know, uh, dubbing a different language on top of it. We don't do that. We get, we get, you know, content created in those different languages. Okay, so that's as far as uh, content in your uh, video business goes. Uh, tell me what else is happening at InMobi. You know, you guys are looked at uh, uh, quite strongly. What's happening? Look, as a company, uh, we, about a year ago, we restructured ourselves as a, you know, in a group structure. So we now have an Imobi group and underneath which we have three companies right now. Uh, one is the, our business that with which we started off called the Imobi Marketing Club. That business is doing phenomenally well, you know, growing across the globe. Very large market share in, uh, in the US and in China, growing very healthily in, in Asia. It's a profitable business for us. You know, we're very, very happy with that business. Hopefully we'll try to take that business IPO in the next few years. We then started Glance, and that's become a company in itself. We recently raised capital. We've chatted about that in the past. We just did an acquisition. We're on our way with Glance to be one of the top, top, uh, uh, you know, consumer platforms on the planet. That's our aim, and we will, we will do that from India. And you know, there are not that many content platforms that have been created from India for the globe. Similarly, when we started in Mobi, there were not that many, uh, you know, product companies that were created from India for the globe. So. We are trying very similar strategies across both of these. And our third company is called True Factor, which is a data company. Uh, it's a data as an intelligence uh, platform. And, and that's a, a, a newest uh, company. It's doing very well. It's a company which is focused on the US market. And uh, we're just in the early stages of that business to scale that business. But we see similar potential in that business also. So right now, as part of the group company, we have, uh, as part of Imobi Group, we have three companies underneath those. But our focus, by the way, as you would know from you know, our history, has always been to focus on innovation and use technology to drive and create new companies and new products and you know, kind of go from there versus leveraging capital as a way to essentially build new businesses. And that's, uh, that's the way we, we are differ, different from most other companies out there. And we feel pretty satisfied in using technology and innovation as a way to grow. Yeah, of course, you know, any uh, startup, any new economy company has to be in uh, technology, use artificial intelligence, data analytics, and all of that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, as an outsider, as an observer, can I say that True Factor is perhaps your biggest differentiator from other startups? Well, it is, it is a company, you're, you're very right, by the way. There is no such company as True Factor out there today because True Factor uh, is a, uh, is an intelligence as a service platform. And what we are thinking about is that, you know, 
100 years ago, the industrial revolution happened because there was electricity. And when electricity was provided into these uh, into factories, their production capabilities increased and you, you got the industrial revolution going on. We think that the next generation of revolution, we all understand is through data and AI. But how do you provide that, uh, that capability of data and AI into every enterprise in the world is still not a solved problem. There are only a handful of enterprises in the world that actually today leverage AI and data. Our aim with True Factor is to essentially make every enterprise on the planet uh, an AI-ready company and provide them the, the AI that they need, you know, literally like electricity gets provided into those enterprises. So we are on a mission to, to essentially drive the next revolution around intelligence, which is not a new thing, but we think we're going to play one of the most formidable roles in making that happen. And are your clients primarily telcos, telecom companies for True Factor? No, uh, our customers, our customers are any enterprise out there. We partner with the telcos to essentially provide the service, but the consumption of that service will be done by any any enterprise out there, be it in the, in the real estate companies or retailers, uh, QSR companies, banks, you know, you name it. And we have a bunch of those as customers that can actually be leveraging this intelligence to become smarter themselves. That's the thesis that we hold. IPO in uh, 2020 in India, NASDAQ, where? No, I think we'll be here after that most probably. Uh, but uh, we'll see, we haven't decided where we will go uh, IPO, but uh, it's a good exercise to go through at least. Okay, let's see if you agree with the IPO being a good idea once you're listed. Uh, well, thanks, Naveen, for joining us here on Startup Central and for being so candid. Look forward to many more such interviews. All right, thank you.